Hello friends! Today I'm going to tell the story of the Jurai Gumo. It is a Japanese yokai, or monster slash demon, depending on how you want to translate words. I'm aware of three major variations of this story. There's probably more, so we're going to get right into it. Three main variations of tales regarding Jurai Gumo are the monster in the fortress, the woman in the woods, and the consuming bride. So I'll go over the two of them real quick and then I'll actually tell the full tale of the, the other. So the monster in the fortress is a band of heroes or refugees find their way to a castle or a fortress that's usually remote, and the only person they find there is a woman who offers them shelter provided they follow certain rules. If they follow the rules, they're allowed to leave in the morning. If not, they are destroyed. For the consuming bride, it is they find a woman in the woods who they fall in love with almost immediately because she is beautiful, bring her home only for her to devour them when the night of the consummation of a marriage comes. The third variation that I've seen a lot more often is that of the reclusive woman who lives in the woods. She is beautiful, typically lives someplace that is remote but close enough that she could interact with people if she wanted to. Most versions include some form of waterfall or lake that she lives by and that she is reclusive. Typically there's also a lot of other dangerous things in this environment. And the story goes thusly. One day a woodcutter ventured deep into the woods. As he was seeking the hardiest trees to fell to bring back, to turn into charcoal. He spotted a woman sitting by the shore of a pristine clear pond that had a little waterfall filling it. Knowing that this deep in the woods there were dangerous animals and sometimes bandits, he approached and introduced himself, saying, beautiful woman, are you sure it's safe for you to be here alone? And she said, oh yes, I'm, I'm quite fine here. I have lived here my entire life. Although for visitors, I would not recommend being out after dark. But aren't you lonely out here? And she says, no. Passerby such as yourself engage me in conversation every once in a while, and that is sufficient for me. And he presses her further. But would you not prefer some of the enjoyments of town? Where there are more people, where you can have finer clothing, makeup, rich foods? She says, ah, but I have all the food I require here. I can live off of what I catch. You really should be going. As I said, it's dangerous to be here after nightfall. So with some protestation, he finally relents and says, but could I call upon you again? She says, if you wish. So the next day he returns to find her again sitting by the, by the pond. But this time he's more insistent. Fair maiden, you really shouldn't just live here in the woods. There are so many better things that I could show you in the city. She says, well, that may be, but I'm happy here. And honestly, what more could I ask for? I appreciate your concern, but really, you don't need to worry about me. You can, you can go on your way. Besides, from everything you've said, aren't there people back in town who will miss you, who are concerned about you? You really should go home to them. And he grumbles and complains and eventually asks once again, 
Well, I suppose I will go, but may I visit you again? She says, if you must. So on the third day, he returns. But this time he is determined to bring her home with him. And he says, fair maiden, I have visited you three times now, yet I see no residence. I see no place that you reside. Are you sure you wish to remain in the woods? I have fallen in love with you. You could always come back to the village and be my wife. To which the woman responds, you know, I'd really rather not. I'm happy here. And, and really, as I said yesterday, do you not have people back home who need you? And he says, but I in good conscience cannot allow you to just continue remaining out here in the woods. So she says, very well. Here is my deal for you. If you can prove to me that you can survive in these woods until dawn, I will return to your village and marry you. The man goes, oh, yes. I knew I would win her over. And she just smiles and thinks, we'll see how this goes. So they continue chatting until night falls. And she tells him, well, we will now see if you can prove that you are worthy to be my husband. And when the moon rose, her body twisted, changed, and where there was once a beautiful woman was now an enormous spider. The man screamed in terror and tried to flee, but he did not get far, wherefore she clutched him with her forelimbs, injected him with her venom, and sucked him dry. As always, this is just one version of the story of the Jurai Gumo. And there are many others, as each prefecture and district tends to have its own unique charm to its myths. I hope you enjoyed the story. If you did, go ahead and leave a like, comment, subscribe. Give me suggestions. Are there other tales you'd like me to tell? Stories to share. And as always, until next time. Walk in the light, my friends. Bye.